Hello, everybody. Andrew Blake from the DigitalAudioManual.com. Today, let's talk about a few of the many output options that are available to us with a new drum machine in Cubase 14. Let's begin looking at the drum machine and drum sounds in general. When you first load up your drum machine, and if you're using the pattern editor, some kind of drum pattern, all your sounds are coming to the same sound source. And we have options on the drum machine to go to this group tab, change the volume levels, and make basic mixes. But if you're actually going to use this in a song, you may want to take everything up a level so that you can get a little bit more control on how you handle your drum sounds. For example, if we take this basic pattern, we go down the list of different sounds, we can see that they've given us, along with a basic kick and snare, we also have a set of percussion sounds, in this case bongo drums and little conga drums. Let's solo those for a minute because we have the option to do that. I'm going to go down the list and hit solo on everything that says bongo or conga. And if I play that pattern now, over on the right, I can see LEDs showing me what tracks are playing at any time. And I could go to any of those individual drums, click on the slider for the level. I could raise and lower that. I have my options for that. But what happens when you want to raise or lower all of these conga and bongo drums together at the same time? Which is typically what you're going to want to do as you move along in any production. You're going to want to set initial levels and you're going to want to refine levels as you go. But basically you're going to want to treat percussion sounds like that as one instrument that you can raise and lower. Same thing really with hi-hats or other combinations like that. I want to show you a couple of different approaches and you can make up your own mind about what works for you. If you stay right in this drum machine, we also have the option over on the right to send the outputs of any of these drums to the Cubase mixer. You can hit this drop down list and you'll get a list of all the different outputs you can choose. And if I went right from the top at the drum that says kick, say I go to output two, and then I could just go down the list and use output three and go on down. One nice thing about this option, although it's somewhat tedious picking out each individual output like this, it made it somewhat simple as you can just hold your mouse over that particular output, simply spin it. Very quickly you can change these outputs. For example, if I'm just going to go 5 and then output 6, output 7, it's almost as quick just clicking on it in general. Pretty quickly I can fill all of these out to their own individual outputs. Once I finish going down that list, I'm going to switch over to the Cubase mixer and automatically the channels are set up and labeled with the right instruments. So in this way, it's actually a very good option that they've given us. You can select your channels. You can hold shift and select all your channels. Hold alt and shift. Bring them all down at the same time if you want. And then I can bring up the levels of each drum the way I want. We have all the usual options for linking your tracks or creating groups. For example, now if I take the conga drum, highlight the other ones, I can tell what they are just by the names. I can go up to the top and say link these channels. If I want, I can create a VCA fader for them. Hit OK. With the VCA fader, just like a group fader, I can solo it if I want, which allows me to hear just those bongo drums. Then control the volume of them. If we again look at the conga drums, for our example, if I go over on the right where I've set the output, this first drum is going to output seven. I have the option to go to every one of these other drums that are the same kind of percussion, change those to the same output seven, go to this next one. Again, I can just spin it if I want, go to the last one, move that to seven. And then if I go back to the mixer, all those drums are now coming through this one channel. So instead of using a VCA or a group, I can bring them right through the same track. If I want, I can edit that channel, change the EQ or any number of things. If you choose that option, then if you want to change the volume on your sounds, go back into your group tab, pick whatever instrument you want, and you can adjust this volume slider or its pan option as well. And all of these are very good options. But let me show you another way that you may not have considered. It gives us some extra powerful editing capabilities in terms of how we handle these instruments. For this example, I'm going to go to the preset. It's called Summer. Double click on that in case you want to follow along and do this for yourself. I'm going to go back to my pattern editor. There's a button here that says select the randomization mode. For this example, I'm going to go to the full randomization and I'm going to hit this dice a few times. It fills up a pattern really good. Also on the far left, I'm setting this for 64 steps. This allows me to create a four bar pattern. I'm going to drag the pattern from this picture up into the project and I can see it's filled out a four bar pattern for me. I play the pattern, I get this. You can see the pattern plays below. Every instrument is being utilized right now. If I go back up to the original track and choose the option to duplicate the track, as you can see it did exactly that. It duplicated the track and the pattern. 
I'm going to use my mute tool, go back to the original pattern and mute it. And now I have the new pattern on the new track playing exactly what it did. If I come down into the pattern editor after highlighting this pattern, let's go right for the percussion instruments like we did. I'm going to find the bongos, hit the solo option on those. Three of them. Turns out there's four instruments here. Of course, when you hit solo, everything else gets muted. Now, if I play the pattern, I only have those percussion instruments. Let's go ahead and name this track Bongo. We have some idea what we have. we will set it for a different color as well. Now I'm going to go back to my original track, highlight it, then choose the option to duplicate it again. You can set up shortcut keys for these kind of tasks. For example, I have a shortcut key that immediately duplicates the track for me, so I don't even have to go to the menu. And then on this track, let's go through and find anything that says hi-hat and solo those instruments. I have a hi-hat open, another hi-hat open, and a hi-hat closed here. There's three instruments there. And then this track sounds this way. Go ahead and name this one hi-hat. Now, like I've showed you before in the previous videos, you can have MIDI and a pattern all on the same track. The idea that those were exclusive turned out to be not true. We can indeed have our pattern and we can record MIDI on the same tracks. I have my MIDI keyboard hooked up and I want to record some live kick drum from me playing it. I'm going to go right back up to my first track. Because I have my pattern muted, I don't have to worry about it playing that. I can just play my keyboard notes. As this plays, I'm going to put in a four to the floor kick drum. Now I can take that track and simply drag it onto another track. It's going to reload the drum machine and bring down everything I need into that new track. Let's call this the kick. I'm going to give this a different color as well. Record a simple clap in here as well. I'm going to go back up to the original track. Again, there's many ways to approach this, giving you one way to focus on to begin with. So when I hit a key on my MIDI keyboard, the clap sound, start this and record some clap sounds. Once again, I can grab that track, just drag it down. I'll call it clap. We could go further separating all our tracks this way. We'll stop with that one. One more thing I'm going to do is one more time, go back up to my original track and duplicate that. Cubase 14 has a new command that we can add a shortcut key to. It allows us to move tracks. I've done that with this one. I can just move this track down to the bottom of the list. I'm going to call this percussion. Unmute this, select it to bring it up. And on this track, I'm basically going to mute everything that I've already used. For example, the bongos I'm going to mute out of here and the conga drums. Then I'm going to go down to the hi-hats and mute those out. And then I'm going to mute out the clap and any of the kick drums. So that really only leaves four instruments left. The claves, crash, shaker, and the cowbell. If I play that track, I get these sounds. And then here's some Cubase tricks to know. I'm going to select all these channels. I'm going to go up to the studio menu, come down and say Mix Console 4. And then on this Mix Console, go to one of my visibility agents, click on that, and tell it to show only the selected channels. Now I have an easy access to those channels. And hold Alt and Shift and bring all these channels down. Another great Cubase 14 feature. I can reorder these channels just by clicking and dragging on them. I'm going to move my kick drum all the way over. I'm going to bring my clap drum over a little bit. Move the hi-hat over. That leaves the bongo and the percussion. Now I'm going to play this project and adjust my levels. This allows us to do something that none of the other options allow us to do. And it's a pretty nice option in terms of the flexibility and where we can go with adding the variety to our sounds. So let me demonstrate that for you now. If we go back to our original pattern where all the instruments are combined in our one single sound source, each instrument does have an option to randomize as well as many other choices that you can make per instrument to make all kinds of variety in the sound. But once again, if you have multiple instruments that you're trying to affect, I can go to one particular instrument start hitting the randomize button or draw in individual steps or use any of the various other options that are given here. But what I can't do is change these percussion instruments as a group as long as I'm tied to using the drum machine and the group page where everything is put together in one place. And then beyond that, if I want to go up and hit this master randomize, which does allow me to change all these different percussion sounds at the same time, it also has the effect of changing every other instrument meaning the kick is going to get randomized again, the clap is going to get randomized again. As long as everything is together like this, I can't do certain things in the specific way that I'm trying to do. 
On the other hand, when I have everything broken up the way I do here, where everything kind of has its own track, and we have patterns, but the patterns are specific to certain instrument groups, I can reorder these or randomize them or even come down and write in individual steps or change the pattern editor any way I want, but it's only going to affect these bongo drums. If I have my kick playing with them, it's not going to have any effect whatsoever on the kick. Let's say I go to the hi-hats, add those into the mix. Let's say I want to keep that pattern. I can now come down to the pattern editor. I can just duplicate this pattern. I have the option to click on any of these sounds, tell it to remove all the steps from that step lane. Then I can actually click right in the pattern editor, draw in anything I want to have, play that new pattern, randomize and change the velocity if I want to, draw in some repeats if I want to, I can spread these patterns out. I can go back to the first one and make sure that's just pattern one. My second one being pattern two. Play pattern one going into pattern two. Combine it with elements from the other instruments. And ultimately, if I want, bring all the drums back in, vary the ones I want, change the patterns on the ones I want, and then wind up with this. So as you can see, whether you use the built-in ways that have been provided in the group pages or changing the outputs individually, or ultimately breaking our drum machine and pattern into individual tracks where we can mute out, change patterns however we want. We have more than a few options available to us to help us make these drums come alive and experience some great levels of creativity with the drums and percussions in general in Cubase 14. So take those tips, go put them to work for yourself, make some great music, and I will see you next time. All right, it's gonna wrap it up for today. As always, if you haven't already, click the link in the description of this video to learn how you can get access to the all-new Digital Audio Manual Preferred. It's the clear, step-by-step -step solution showing you not only the tips, but all the secret and typically never talked about features that'll take you to a higher level of using your software. If you've been searching for an all-in-one solution to take you from start to finish and learning Cubase and WaveLab and other music software, this is exactly what you've been looking for. So click on the link in the description and come and be part of the clear path to a better learning experience. So today we took a look at how we can change the outputs on the drum machine and the pattern editor. We began looking at the built-in options, expanded on that and took it out into the Cubase mixer. And then we ended up taking all our drum instruments, breaking them out into individual tracks, where we were able to gain control over groups of sounds, freedom to change the randomization on those different sounds, and then even to create all new patterns to play along with our live or program MIDI performances. And we will continue to explore all these different creative options and the tools that we have available to us. As always, it's great to have you guys here, and I will see you on the next video.